Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel where we are talking about different integration scenarios. Today in this demonstration, we have an integration scenario where we have a data JSON, uh, JSON where we have a JSON data arriving into a block storage and this JSON data is of an object type. Let's say this is the data which contains object as in states which is of type array and then within this array we have different state name and code and it contains number of records of all the states available right now what we want to do is as in data integration process we want to read this json object and insert into a table and that is what our scope of this demonstration is so let's see how do we perform this action with the help of Azure Data Factory. So this is my SQL Server instance where we have two tables, uh, but we do not have any table called state. So what I'm planning to do is I'm planning to create the table on the fly. So if the table does not exist and if we are reading the record for the very first time, it will create the table based on the schema, what we have inside the given JSON object. Now let's go back to our data factory instance. So for the demonstration, I'll be using this data factory instance and I'll be defining the pipeline. Now here in the pipeline section, I'll create a new pipeline, right? As of today, we were using the copy data activity to copy the data from source to destination because Till now, whatever the use case scenarios we have seen in on those scenarios, the data what we have, we had the, that was in the flattened structures. Whereas here in this case, we have a JSON as an object and that object contains an array property. So we have an object scenario and object scenario dealing with the data, uh, copy data activity is not going to be a suitable thing. So in this case, we are going to use the data flow. So let's drag and drop the data flow activity to our pipeline, which means that we have to define our data flow because if you look at the settings here, it requires the data flow to be provided. You can create a new data flow like you create the data set, link service and all, or you can simply go to this data flow option and right here from new data flow, you can create the data flow. Let me click here new data flow and that will create a new data flow so data flow so what is data flow data flow gives you an option to define a flow of your database activities or the activities related to the data which you are dealing with within your data factory pipeline or within your data factory journey so for each of the data flow process or flow you define the data flow, how your data should be moving from one stage to another stage. That is what you define with the help of data flow. So first of all, when you define the data flow, it requires a source to be provided. So where is my source? Now to define the source, you click on add source. And here in the add source, you can give it a name to your data source, description to your data source, and then source type. For the source type, by default, the data set is selected, which means that you have to specify the data set. So as our data set is in the JSON and as of now, we do not have any existing data set which can deal with the JSON type of data set. So I'm going to create a new data set for this use case. Let me click on the blob storage and I'll be using the JSON as in file format and then I'll call it as in DCDS source json okay link service we already have a link service which can connect to the blob storage so i'll be using that and let's test that if that link service is able to reach to the blob storage container so this is my container it can reach to now next i'm going to point to the blobs bulk state data and that is the file which contains the records as you can see from here this is the file i'll be selecting this file so that's the my file click OK. So now your source setting the data set is 
configured within your source of your data flow. Now here are some options like allow schema drift, which means that tomorrow if there is a change in your JSON, like add a new column is added or a existing column is removed, things like that, then it will accept the changes as in a schema drift. If you uncheck this column, it means that your JSON or your file, the source file has to be expected to be of the same type. But in this case, by default, we, we are going to keep it as it doesn't matter. Next, you have the source options section where you can specify the wildcard path if in case if you would like to read multiple files and you want to operate on those files, right? Uh, And there are some additional settings available as well. Like you can, if you would like to apply any filters or things like that. Next interesting column you have, then let, let me go to the, uh, go to the bottom as we are, our source is dealing with the JSON. So if you have a JSON setting options, let's expand that option. So JSON settings is what is your documentation form? Is it from the single document, which means is it a JSON object, which is representing a single record? If it is, then you select this. Is it a record per line within the JSON? Like each line is representing a single record in the JSON. If it is, then select this option. If you have a JSON object, which represents the array of documents, which in our case, yes, it is an array of documents. So I'm going to select this option. Now uncode the column name has comment, uh, single quoted, black slash, things like that. If you have these kind of a configuration in your JSON, depending upon the configuration you can opt any of these selections as of now for our demonstration the json we are using does not qualify for any of these settings so i'll be moving to the next projection settings so as soon as i select the projection settings it has imported the schema or the skeleton of the json object as you can see that my json object contains the column state and within the state object, I have two attributes, name and code, and that is how my structure looks like, right? If you would like to reset the schema, you can click on this button. If you would like to import the projection again, you can again click on this option. If you would like to overwrite the schema, like manually want to configure the schema, you can do that from this option. Let's click on the optimize, which is the next option. It says the portion of the partition option, like use the current partition, single partition, set partitioning, if you would like to set a specific part partitioning option. I'm going to leave this option now for default for now because our demonstration will work as is. Maybe we'll have a future uh, separate video working on these settings later on. Let's click on the inspect. On the inspect, we can see that we have these columns in the same structure and the next, which is the last tab shows the data preview. So if I refresh that, it should fetch the part of the data here in this source section and should display the data which is available. So you can see that it has loaded the data, but the data which is loaded is of array type and the depending dependent child properties or child record is not going to display because data preview always displays basically the record uh, in the flattened structure so as this array or this JSON does not contains any other properties. It has just a single property which is of type array. That is how it is displayed like this. So what we need to do next is we need to change this array to a flat structure. And for that, I'm going back, going back to our data flow canvas. And from here, I'll click this plus icon. And from this plus icon, there are multiple modifier and then input output activities available, which we can use. So as we would like to format our data to the flatten structure, I'm going to use this formatter option, which is a flatten. And that will help me to flat my source data. And you can see that this flatten activity contains the input stream as in source, which is this option, which is the previous option. Now we have to specify, you would like to flatten your data 
on which column like on the basis of which column you would like to flatten your schema so in our case i'm going to say that i would like to flatten my based on my state object so that is the object which will be used to uh, to flatten and if you go uh, down you will see that you have the input column so right now it is showing the a root node which is a state node which is of type object we don't want to do that what we want to do is we want to use this name column right and then we want to call it as a name so that name will state dot name will represent it as in name next i'm going to add another column which is going to be the next column which is a short name or state code and that is going to be represented as in code so that is what you have to specify as the flatten setting let's go back to the next column optimize we don't want to do any kind of a partition it will remain same now here in the inspect section now if you look at that uh, uh, as a result of the flatten your column structure will look like this the column name name type is string it is coming from state dot name code type is string coming from state dot code let's click on the data preview and see if that previews the data which we are looking for so using the flattened structure we are able to get the data in a format which we are looking for as you can see that is this time it's showing all my data with the appropriate column name which is name and code in the flat structure rather than having this state object as such now as at this step number two we are able to retrieve the data in a format in which we are looking for next i'm going to define my third step which is the sync step where we are going to use our sql server state the sql server data set now as of now sql server data set i have it but it is pointing to the organization table whereas we would like to insert this record to a separate table and the table we want to create dynamically and for that reason i'm going to create a new data set so let me click on new i'll choose the sql server database option i'll specify the ts sql i'll say state right and then link service there is a link service already available so i'll use that it is pointing to the same database here in this case the table name i don't want to select any table name you can see that there are two tables but none of these tables are going to qualify for the record set which i'm or the schema which i'm looking for so i'm going to keep this table name empty let me just click on ok that is it now my sync data is also been configured there are other settings as well which we can see later on but before that let me just double click on this sql state data set because here we have to specify the name of the tables so let me just specify the table name as in dbo which is the schema name and then table name i'll say that is state right and that is it about the data set let's go back to the data flow again and we will look at the settings now so i'll just move the settings panel a little bit up here in the settings panel you have the option as in update method allow insert allow upsert then table action recreate do we want to recreate the table every time when this execute do we want to truncate the table before it this executes batch size what is the batch size you would like to use do you want to it will use the default by default it will use the temp db so the records will be up created first of all in the temp db and then afterwards it will be inserted into the actual table it has some information given about the temp db when to use this temp db option and when not to use the temp db it says that if you have large amount of data then you should not be using this temp db option that is something which should be aware about it for now i just have a couple of records like less than 100 records so i am okay with that option right do you want to execute any pre or post deployment sql script like do you want to insert a record or do you want to you know, perform any kind of a validation or things like that then you can have those sql script created here next you have the error option what do you want to do with uh, in case of there are any errors do you want to uh, assert failure rows or do we want to truncate uh, transaction commit what is your transaction commit and all those things right again there is a link service requires in case if there are any errors do we want to log those errors to to somewhere next you have the mapping if you have a requirement to map anything any column specifically then you can do that 
again these are the kind of specific setting which we'll look into another scenario where we will have a use case specific to these settings but for now i'm going to leave these option by default because our objective is just simply straightforward insert what we have it it says that the transformation stream is invalid let's fix that let me just click on that what is the error we have so let me just validate this pipeline as is yes validation is successfully completed now we are able to now as our data flow is ready let's go back to our pipeline and here in the pipeline we are going to define the data flow that this is the data flow it should be using it it will use this integration auto uh, built-in integration runtime compute size now as our pipeline is ready it is using one data flow activity and then it is making a call to the data flow which we have defined here which contains these three steps that's it let's run the pipeline in a debug mode and we'll see that how does it looks like remember in the sql server we do not have any table called the state right now i'll refresh again there is no table exists called the state so i'm just going to so the pipeline activity is completed let's review that or uh, review the changes of the data flow in detail i'll click on this lens icon that will display the pipeline execution pipeline run which it has just now performed so that's our source activity so let's open that it has taken nine seconds after that it has taken 39 records with one second for 402 millisecond and after that it has taken it has jumped to the SQL Server step and that is where it has taken 91 millisecond and 2 seconds to sync the processing and the records are basically processed the way it requires to be. Let's go and go to the database, refresh the number of table and see if we have the table. Yes, we have got the state table. I'm going to select top 1000 records from the table and see if the, it has inserted the record which we are looking for. So as we can see that it has got all those 39 records, right? Now if I go back to our pipeline and if I try and run again, just to make sure that if, whether it is working fine or not, so I'll go back again. Or possibly what I will do is uh, for the next run, I'll make the changes to this Rakesh Udivanshi for an example, that's the name of the column and I'll say RS as a short code. So that will, th that is the change I'll make. So the activity is completed. It's taking a little bit time, but that is okay because we are using a uh, lower infrastructure. Let me just verify the records again. That's done. Now, as I have made some changes in this run, which is I made the changes to the state column. If I run again, I would like to see if, how does it behaves. Does it going to be delete the record and then update with this name? Basically, just make an update, or it will reject the, that particular update. So that proves that will prove basically update action as well. So just give me a moment. So the pipeline is completed again. Let's verify our records. I'll run the query again and see if that has make any changes as for this. So what is happening right now is basically it's creating the duplicate record for each of my run. So 39 times three, it has created all those records duplicated and that's my record which i've created and that is happening because of the data set setting for the sql db state now if we go back to the data flow here at the sync setting and the settings we are saying that allow inserts so is inserting the record again and again so instead of that if we say allow upsert add row filter right and then upsert if the condition we have to specify 